who the intermediaries are within the systems, right? Um, who the middlemen are between one person sending a crypto token to another person. And that is the miners, right? A transaction doesn't end up on the blockchain unless a miner puts it on there. They have not yet been recognized. We still, as, as intermediaries, right? People still call these systems disintermediated. And um, the power that they exercise is in choosing the transactions, ordering them, and um, they can delay people's transactions. They can um, take money to do what are called things like sandwich attacks and front running and back running and all kinds of games. And there has not been very good research into um, the mining or validating community. They're, they are coming out of the shadows much more. Um, many of them have migrated just recently from China where they were highly concentrated and China recently um, made it illegal for miners to Bitcoin miners to operate there. So many are coming to the U.S., many to my home state of Texas. And um, I think these players need more scrutiny. They are intermediaries in important multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar financial systems. They need more scrutiny. Looking at that clip, that was from July. Uh, and we saw that MEV was brought up on Capitol Hill. I want to get your guys' take on the whole idea of miners as intermediaries and how you see MEV going forward uh, as we see like the regulatory gauntlet kind of coming down. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big advocate of decentralization. So when I hear something like that, I almost see it as somewhat of an attack on the idea that a blockchain should be completely decentralized. But that's the whole idea of what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to replace the traditional financial system, which is highly centralized, with something that doesn't have any kind of centralized control. And when you're talking about miners as being the intermediaries or in control of the network and then saying we should regulate them or whatever, you're almost attacking the idea that a blockchain should be decentralized. So I would say unequivoc unequivocally that I would be I'm against, I don't agree with what she's saying. I think that uh, the it, it's really interesting and Fleshbots, um, I think, has values that align Nathan as well. We want to keep permissionless, censorship-free uh, systems, but we do see the heightened attention that block producers are getting, uh, not just in proof-of-work systems with ETH miners, but all types of uh, cryptocurrencies, all types of block producers too. You know, ultimately, we think uh, at Flushbots that the remedy to this is to keep a neutral position for block producers by splitting the party that builds blocks from the party that proposes blocks to the network, right? So uh, a validator in ETH2, your job will just be to, to sign a block um, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to just accept the most profitable block template from the network overall, uh, and even have privacy preserving guarantees to that, such that you don't actually know the contents of the block that you're proposing, and no one does except for uh, the party that has built that block. So we see this split between block builders and block proposers uh, as integral to the future of Ethereum and cryptocurrency more broadly, uh, and as a way to enshrine the neutrality of block producers, um, you know, given the heightened regulatory attention that they're getting. And, you know, certainly don't agree with the analysis as well. Yeah, I'd say that the word intermediary there was doing way too much work. Uh, she was using it to refer to multiple different things, uh, different times she used it. Um, so that was particularly frustrating for me because in, in one sense, if you're like, these are people are intermediaries and that they are participating in a gossip network and then uh, producing blocks um, and somebody needs to gossip say, the transaction that will eventually be included in the block to them. So in that sense, yes, it is an intermediary. Like that person stands in between multiple parties, but in the traditional financial sense of the word, they are not intermediaries. They are not custodial in any sense and you, their behavior is highly predictable. Um, they can't like explicitly steal your money. Um, so, um, I generally am very, very disheartened when I listen to anything, uh, that politicians say about, uh, crypto because it's generally quite inane. And I was kind of shocked at the, uh, coherence of what was said there, except for that particular, um, disingenuous usage of the word intermediary. Um, and my general inclination or my, uh, as an individual is my hope is that the, I the crypto ecosystem. Um, my belief is that we'll be able to create technical solutions to all of these like problems. Um, I think that the problem that was being uh, insinuated there uh, is not a real one. Um, the uh, actual problems that we've been discussing, the like, actual like dynamics for users, um, are real ones. Um, and I believe that people like Robert are um, coming up with some great solutions to those. And um, me and my peers at Uniswap, we are, uh, as protocol developers, um, working on 
uh, designing systems that are maximally robust and maximally predictable for our users. And I think that that is the, the route that we should go and not some sort of, uh, you know, regulated position. Like, right, it's it's almost nonsense to talk about regulating mining in the first place. Like, it's just like, it doesn't work. One thing, uh, you know, what is, uh, what is front running? What is a sandwich a priori, right? I think it's extremely difficult. Like, technically, I'm not even sure that makes sense, right? Um, I, I don't think that's feasible at all. I think even if, if that were to come, um, like the law would just be unenforceable too. And Yeah, that's one thing I want to touch on that I feel is like almost the most important thing that I took from what Jordan said is that this is about developing decentralized technology. And once we get sufficiently good at that and the technology is sufficiently advanced enough, these conversations sort of become irrelevant because as Robert said as well, it's just not an enforceable system anymore. It, it, I know we're out of time, but one last quick thing is, is we want to build systems that make sense under assumptions of rationality. So people acting in their economic interests and not honesty. Uh, yep. and I think people are trying to do a flashbots.